even um, those who are sympathetic to President Obama on most issues are saying that part of the reason he did this today was to, quote, box in President-elect Trump. All right, so that's from uh, last week in, the, in Kellyanne Conway, spokesperson for Trump, obviously, uh, talking about the president, you know, sending diplomats, you know, packing. Right. And then, of course, Donald Trump was able to say, hey, listen, I knew Putin was smart. You cooler heads prevail here. You know, all of this rigmarole over the hacking, um, I think you're right. I think you're going to have a situation where Congress will step in and try to have the have the signature on this on this topic. But the bigger question is investment in foreign countries, right? And whether or not Donald Trump's position with all of his uh, investments starts to reflect guys like Putin who really run the country for his own profit. Right. I mean, I think we're well built to seize the moment and defend against that. But that's what disclosure is all about. And so that's far, right. not so good, right? That's right. So, I mean, this is a point that goes beyond partisanship. I think both, obviously, Trump's opponents want him to disclose and divest, but even his supporters ought to want to do this. Why? Because we want to make sure, we want to have confidence that there's not some kind of financial interest that's moving his decision making. And we can do that if we know what all of his investments are, what all of those contacts are. For example, there's this uh, organization called Bayrock, and a recent piece in the American Interest by a guy named um, James Henry, I think it is, argued that this Bayrock is sort of directly connected to the Russian mob. Now, I don't want to believe this, but I want to be sure that this is not the case. And so the only way that Trump is going to be able to reassure the whole public, because he's the president of all Americans, he's not just the president of Republicans who were not never Trumpers, mm -hmm. right? He's the president of all Americans. He has to reassure all Americans that there is nothing in his financial portfolio that allows Putin or even the next, uh, you know, he has ties to Indonesia, and there's a political figure who's going to be running for office who is his partner. Right? So we have to make sure that somehow his financial ties are not shading his decisions. I'm not doubting his integrity, but I just don't want the American public to have a reason to doubt it. And that's going to be solved only by his releasing at least his taxes. <laughs> Which he won't do unless he really steps in it somewhere and the tide turns on him. I, I, I think this guy has a chance to be one of the most successful presidents in the history of the, of the country and also uh, impeached in eight weeks. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure which. It, right? It, That's a good right. And in fact, I mean, this is his weakest. I mean, there are so many reasons why progressives and the left and people of color will object to him, right? And right. I, we acknowledge that. However, everyone will object to somebody who's obviously using his public office for personal gain. That is called corruption. There's a guy named Norm Eisen who is really good on this, and he wrote a piece recently. He's been appearing. And he's actually trying to help Trump see that his interest is in actually becoming transparent, not becoming what he well, was. Well, the, the, the Trump factor has been uh, unprecedented, but the American public does one thing. It goes like this on an issue. And if corruption or worry about you know investment uh, conflict ends up being a top concern, right. it happens like that, doesn't it? Good to see you. Nice Appreciate to see you. it.